Welcome back to the second workshop creating a Phenakistoscope animation in Adobe Premiere. In this workshop I'm going to show you how you can use only one still image that you've taken off your Phenakistoscope disk and the sound you created on Audacity in order to create a full animation in uh, Adobe Premiere. Before we get started I wanted to show you that I have my source material files for this workshop uh, already in the Phenakistoscope folder that I created in the first part of this workshop. But if you're looking for these files, um, I have provided a download link as well in the comment section of this video where you can get these files from. So let's get started with Premiere. I create a new project again. Name this project Phenakistoscope Animation 2 and make sure that this is saved in my Phenakistoscope folder on the desktop that is still pre-selected from the first workshop. So I can just hit choose and OK. Next I need to import my media files into the project window and again I could just double click into the import media to start section right here or alternatively I can also go to file import and then uh, specify the two files that I want to import, the false indigo.wav file and the uh, single image file in this case. Once I have both of these files in Premiere, I need to create a sequence again from my single image file. So I grab this and then drag and drop this onto the create sequence icon in the bottom right corner of my project window. And then in the sequence, I need to make sure because I want to now uh, rotate this disk uh, using keyframe strategies in Premiere, I need to make sure that it is well centered on uh, the canvas, on the video canvas here in my program window. And I do that by doing uh, two things. I need to create uh, rulers around the window and I need to get my safe margins in there as well that show me the exact center points. Now you may not have both of these um, icons in your um, uh, icon bar at the very bottom of this window, but you can easily get them in there by clicking on this little plus sign here. And then from all the icons that you can choose, you would take the uh, ruler icon and then drag and drop that into your icon bar, into your personal icon bar. And you can also take the save margins one and drag and drop that into your icon bar here as well. Hit OK and now you should have both of these icons in here. You should be able to enable uh, both the safe margins and then the rulers as well. I will take um, from my top ruler by just clicking and dragging in there um, a, a guideline so to say and drag this down and then I take another uh, guideline here and uh, align this with the center point on the horizontal axis. So we have it centered vertically and horizontally, which gives us a really good idea for where our center point of this disk should be. And so this would just um, uh, help you with images that are taken not exactly centered on your cell phone. You can now center them really quite precisely in Premiere as well. So how do I move the center point over? Um, I click on my uh, clip in the sequence window and then I bring up the effect controls for that clip and I go to the anchor point property and I need to move this just a little bit over and probably just a little bit down to center it exactly on my window here. Next I actually want to get rid of the background that you see around it. There's still some of the wooden contraption um, uh, visible maybe some of the books even that you use to prop up your your cell phone and then there's some slightly uneven lighting that's going on with my black background. So I want to get rid of all of this and replace this with a uniform black background and I do this by going to the uh, masks that you can draw in the opacity setting of your clip. And so you click on the uh, create ellipse mask icon and then you start to stretch out this mask so that it actually mm. 
matches the outside dimensions of your disk. Just like that, top and then the bottom one. And so the more you modify this, the closer this circle will also match the circle of your Finakis disk, or Cope disk, just like that. All right, um, the next step, we need to take a look at all of our individual animation steps that we have actually uh, captured on this Phenakistoscope wheel and you realize that you have 12 of these. So we also need to extend the duration of this clip from the three frames that were automatically assigned to it when you imported it. And so remember we set that in the, um, the timeline uh, preferences in the first workshop. But we need to extend this from these three frames all the way up to 12 frames so that we have individual frames in our timeline that later on also represent individual frames in our animation. And so you can extend, uh, increase or decrease the duration of your still image in the timeline by just clicking on the um, end point of your clip and then holding down your mouse and dragging your mouse either left or right in order to extend it. And now we want to start working with keyframes. Keyframes will allow us to specify only two frames with specific properties, one at the very beginning of your animation, one at the very end of your animation, and then have the computer interpolate all the different settings in between uh, this in point and that out point that we have defined. So let's do that with this project as well. So I already have my mouse or my playback head, sorry, playback head at the very beginning of my clip. Then I go into the rotation property in the effect controls in the source window. And I click on that little stopwatch icon in order to activate keyframing for the rotation property only. So I do that. And then I take my mouse and I move the playback head all the way to my 12th frame. So I need to be uh, in frame number 12 on my timeline. And I specify in the rotation property minus 360 degrees. So this would be a full rotation counterclockwise uh, for the Phenakistoscope disc. I hit return. And then when you move your mouse and the playback head back to the beginning, you can already see in your first frame you have zero degrees. If you hit the right key, the right arrow key on your keyboard, the second frame you have minus 30, third frame 60, minus 60, uh, fourth frame minus 90 and so forth. So you can already move quite nicely through this animation using, using just the arrow keys on your keyboard. All right, um, now there's just a few more things to do. Uh, one is to scale down that uh, sequence so that it actually fits our full HD resolution um, for the final output uh, video that we want to create. We also need to loop the sequence uh, to create a longer animation and then um, create uh, or bring in our sound file to create um, an audiovisual composition for the final project. All right, so uh, let's create a new sequence first. I go to File, New, Sequence. And then in here, I go again to my digital SLR folder, uh, 1080p DSLR 1080p 30 for the full HD resolution sequence that we want to work in. Say OK. And then I bring in my original sequence, which has the name of the image file. We should probably rename that. I just call that original sequence. And then the sequence I just created, I call this final sequence. This will help us uh, keep these two apart from each other. So both need to be open uh, in your timeline window. And I want to go into the final sequence, so click that. Uh, if that's for whatever reason not there, you don't see that, double click on final sequence in your project window and that will automatically bring it up in your sequence window or in your timeline window. And then you go to original sequence and click that and drag and drop that into your final sequence in the timeline window. You can use the handle on your scroll bar here again to zoom in just a little bit more so you see that a little bit better. And you can also immediately get rid of the uh, sound component because uh, there is no sound yet to go along with these images. So you would just click into the clip into your final sequence window, go to clip and then say unlink. And then you can select the sound individually, hit delete on your keyboard to get rid of it. 
Now, when you play this back, um, actually right now it's still fairly huge. So let's click into that. And before we play it back, let's scale it down. So I go back to my effect controls um, and then um, scale that down, make it fit my screen a little bit better, something like that. So when you play this back um, and I can just hit the the space bar on my keyboard as a shortcut, or I can hit the play key right here. Either one would be fine. You see that this happens all really, really fast. So the animation is very, very fast. In fact, it's three times as fast as the animation that we created in the first workshop. So before I start to loop it and to repeat this, I want to slow this down to a, a more manageable speed that the animation unfolds a little bit more clearly in front of our eyes. So I can do that by clicking into the clip and then go back into the clip uh, menu and say uh, speed duration. And in the speed property, um, if I want to slow it down to a factor of one third of the speed, so basically turning one frame into three frames, and this is what we did in the first workshop when we actually brought in each individual still image file with a duration of three frames, um, I need to uh, change the speed from 100% down to 33.3%. And I just make sure that the frame sampling is uh, selected right here. Um, so we don't want to interpolate in between frames, but we want to keep the frames separated just using frame sampling like this. Hit OK. And now if I zoom out a little bit, if I play this back, everything should be much, much slower a little bit easier to follow. I'm now at the point where I can take this clip and again I can make a copy of this and then I can paste. So I just use my keyboard shortcut command V or control V on the PC and extend this out for about 15 seconds. And then I bring in my sound composition from Audacity is the false indigo.wav file. Drag and drop that into the sequence and align it with my images. And so now when I play it back, I should see and hear my final project. All right, very nice. So again, all that's left to do is just to set an in point and an out point again to create a selection of what I want to export. And I'm using keyboard shortcuts to do that. Or you can alternatively use the buttons mark in and mark out uh, in order to set these uh, in and out points as well. So again, I went to the beginning of my uh, sequence. I hit the I key on my keyboard to create the in point, And then I went to the, um, the end of my animation and I hit the O key on my keyboard to set the out point. Now I'm at uh, a good place to export this. So I can go to File, Export, Media. And then I do exactly the same procedure as I did in the first workshop. I need to make sure that my format is set to H264. I click on the output file name, uh, name this Anarchistoscope Animation 2. Make sure it's a video file with the MPEG-4 ending right here and that I save it in my Anarchistoscope folder on the desktop. Then I go into the video settings. Make sure that the width and the height are 1920 by 1080 respectively. Frame rate should be 29.97. Field order progressive aspect ratio for the pixels is square and if any of these settings would be uh, not correct, there would be anything else in there, you can easily click uh, on that little checkbox at the end in order to bring up the uh, drop down menu for this property and then change it as you go along. And then finally we scroll down a little bit more to the bitrate settings. I go into my, my variable bitrate. So I have an analysis, a two pass analysis of my footage from the algorithm. Um, which results in the smallest possible file size at the best possible quality. And I leave my target bitrate at 10 and my maximum bitrate at 12, which are fairly decent settings already. And then I go into my audio settings, make sure that I have the AAC audio uh, compressor selected, high audio quality and 320 kilobits per second for the bitrate in my bitrate settings. Can then hit export.
And then once this is done exporting, I can quickly hide Premiere Pro, go back to my desktop and check out my resulting video file, which is Finakistoscope Animation 2 right here. So on the Macintosh, I can just select the file and then hit the space bar in order to preview it quickly. On the PC, you may want to double click it or right click it to choose the application of your choice to open this file. In. All right, very nice. So this would be a good option, let's say, if you had a background that you didn't like in your first um, uh, a recording of your frames um, that maybe you just wanted to replace with a black background to get the most kind of focus on your Phenakistoscope disk. Um, that would only require then one picture of your Phenakistoscope disk shot as straight on as possible and then uh, using the strategies I just explained in Premiere for you to follow along to create a video like this.